On nights when writing ideas swell and circle with the silent fervor of hungry evening bats, yet the mind still cannot focus. Fatigue and emotions are normally to blame. Curtis knew this well, but the knowledge teased him one night as the soft, unfettered breeze drifted in through his window and draped itself about his room like a guest. Or better, a host who was determined to cast sheets over the bothersome desk and papers as if to put them into storage while singing him to sleep. No, something besides energy was missing. He was scouring his innermost thoughts, determined to find the nagging hole. And so she wasn't surprised when he jumped, startled as she hastily flapped into the room. Curtis was ashamed the instant she lighted upon his left shoulder, her poking, jagged wings cradling around the back of his neck and shoulders, like the descending, fossilized pages of an unearthed grimoire. How could he have forgotten? And of course, now that he had forgotten, there would be no hiding this from her. She leaned forward on her haunches, eager to see what Curtis had come up with so far. Not a single page, she mewed, her voice crackling like wildfire, high-pitched but also deep, and then growled. You've got more in you. Her claws sank into Curtis's shoulder and the side of his neck, causing him to exhale sharply and shudder in frightened fascination. Goosebumps crawled all over him. This was her favorite way to appear, when he least expected it. Teasing, picking. My eyes are so tired. Curtis all but whimpered. I can just work on it more to- <gasps> The muse caught him by the chin and cheek, her paw like a tight, leathery, claw-tipped baseball mitt. One of her curved, exposed claws scraped away a part of his beard. It was then their eyes met and Curtis beheld all the muse's beauty and breathtaking horror. Eyes rock-like, solid, olivine, opaque as if fogged, yet so bright against her dark hair and colorless skin, shriveled but tantalizing. Her figure frail-seeming, which was her greatest deception of all. With the sphinx's judging posture and gargoyle ears that fell in a bovine droop and bore the faintest rainbow sheen, she firmly guided Curtis's eyes and face back onto the page. Then she whispered sweet somethings, furiously at first, and gradually calming and settling into a lilting chat as if recounting stories from ages long lost to the haunted, cosmic eons. Catching the fear in his cowering eyes, she snorted with satisfaction, knowing all too well that inspiration can, no, must bring forth a measure of horror with its share of truth, with its dose of coveted, Unreality.